Well, good morning, friends. Uh, my name is Pastor Aaron, and I want to welcome you to Cornerstone Church. You know, here at Cornerstone, our vision is changing lives by leading people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. And whether you're a regular attender or you are just joining us today for this online worship, we trust that you are growing in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Well, based on uh, Governor DeWine's uh, stay-at-home order being extended through the month of April, uh, it won't come as a surprise to you to know that uh, Cornerstone Church uh, will remain closed uh, through the month of April. But I want you to know it is only the building that is closed. The church is alive and active. Uh, this week, I'll be sending you a letter, and part of that letter will include a whole list of opportunities that will enable you to stay connected and to grow uh, in your relationship with Jesus. I want you to know that our staff is meeting every morning, uh, every weekday morning, uh, for a prayer. Uh, and if you would like to share a prayer request with us, uh, you can send that to prayers at cornerstonechurch.org. And then we'll be sure to uh, uh, pray with and for you. Friends, Linda and I are continuing to do a 24-hour fast each weekend. Uh, and we invite you to join us in that fast, maybe fasting a meal or two, uh, but join with us in praying for our church, our community, uh, and our world. Now, before we move on, maybe it'd be good just to give a little bit of Zoom instructions. This may be the first time that you've uh, uh, been a part of a Zoom meeting. If you look up on the right-hand corner of your screen, you have a choice between speaker view and gallery view. Uh, this service will be much easier for you if you click it on speaker view. Uh, and also, we want you to know that to, uh, we, everyone has been muted, so you don't need to worry about background noises uh, interfering with others. And if, by chance, this would come crashing down, we don't know for sure how this technology will, will all work, uh, know that we're recording this service, and we will uh, have that posted uh, sometime soon. I want you to know that today uh, we are going to take communion together. And so if you haven't already uh, gotten a piece of bread or cracker or some type of juice uh, ready, uh, you might want to go and get that uh, for later uh, in the service. You know, this is the beginning of Holy Week. Uh, and this Friday, uh, Anthony and I are working on a guided prayer journey uh, that will be available for you. It will include video and music. Uh, and scripture reading and meditations uh, to help you remember what Christ has done for you. And so you can look for that link in your Thursday email uh, or to be posted uh, on Facebook. And again, next Sunday is Easter. Uh, we wish that we could all join together and share in that joyous celebration together. But unfortunately this year, that's not possible. But we'd like to hear from you. Uh, and so we are inviting you to send us a short 10-second video of your family uh, extending an Easter greeting to other Cornerstone families. Now, that can be uh, just something as simple as uh, if Linda were standing here with me, we would say, uh, good morning, my name is Pastor Aaron, and this is my wife, Linda. And we want to extend to you uh, Easter greetings and to remind you that he is alive. Friends, if you'll record that, uh, on your phone in horizontal view uh, rather than vertical view uh, and send that to Anthony at uh, uh, abowman at cornerstonechurch.org. Uh, then he will put all those in a video and we'll uh, share them uh, next Sunday as we begin to worship uh, on Easter. Friends, I want you to remember that uh, even in the midst of this pandemic, uh, that it's important to laugh and to keep our joy. And so last week, I began sharing with you some uh, funny Facebook memes. And I appreciate those of you who uh, sent me memes this week. I think I received about 25 of them. Uh, and so here are five uh, funny Facebook memes as we begin our uh, time together today. The first one was sent to me by a Star Wars fan. And it's for all of you Star Wars fans. Now, if you don't know Star Wars, you may not get this one. Uh, number four, uh, Governor DeWine asked us this week to wear masks when we go to the store, but I think this is just a bit of overkill. Uh, number three was sent to me from a, a couple of you, 
And it says, I washed my hands so many times, I found answers to my eighth grade social studies test. Uh, number two is for all of you ladies that look forward to Easter every year because you get to buy a new dress. Well, this is Easter fashion for 2020. Dresses for online church. And our number one funny uh, meme this week uh, is in uh, honor of our taking communion today uh, via Zoom. Uh, this is uh, what my daughter calls the upper Zoom. If you would, bow your heads with me in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this day, and thank you that we have this Zoom technology that we can actually all gather together. Um, and please help the rest of today, the rest of the service, to impact everybody that's involved. And please help us to have a good rest of our Sunday once the service is over. Since it's Palm Sunday, we'll be doing a lot of things with our kids, crafts, what have you. Um, amen. Now, before Aaron comes up here for the sermon, um, I would like to remind you that you can give online at www.cornerstonechurch.org slash giving, and you can also send a check to the church. Friends, our uh, year-long goal uh, this in 2020 is to develop 2020 spiritual vision. And as one of the ways that we do that, our uh, prayer team has developed a prayer card for us uh, that we've been praying every day together. And I trust that you are joining us in that at 820 every night. But we've also committed to pray that every time that we gather for worship. So will you join me in praying our church prayer today? Father, move in our hearts so we may see your purpose for our lives, our church, and our community. With gratitude and humility, we fix our eyes on Jesus. Increase our faith so we can boldly pray and bring glory to your name. Empower us with your Holy Spirit so we may lead others into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. And now, Father, we would ask that as we look at your word, that you would help us to grow in our relationship with Jesus Christ. In every home where this is being broadcast, we ask that you, the Holy Spirit, uh, would come and minister in our hearts and let the word come alive to us. Father, we pray for your anointing on your word. And we just ask that in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Well, friends, this is the last week of Lent, uh, and we have been working through the parables of Lent this, this year. Uh, Lent has turned out a little different than any of us anticipated, uh, but I trust that uh, as we look at these stories of Jesus, they're helping you to see uh, why Jesus came. You know, this uh, week, uh, we're going to meet on Wednesday night, as we normally do, uh, and we're going to look at some parables that Jesus told during Holy Week, and so I hope that you'll come uh, and be a part of that. You know, today is Palm Sunday, uh, the beginning of Holy Week, and it was quite a day of celebration. Jesus comes into Jerusalem on a donkey and has seen that the prophet Zechariah had prophesied centuries earlier. It indeed was a time of celebration as people took palm branches and, and began to wave them and, and took their cloaks and put them on the ground in front of Jesus. It was a time of laughter and joy, and, and children even joined in this celebration. You know, a, a week later, there was another time of celebration. Uh, as the disciples of Jesus and others slowly began to realize that Jesus had risen from the dead. But in between uh, these two times of celebration, it was a hard week. I mean, Jesus told uh, some stories that, that let it be known what was going to happen. In fact, one parable uh, that he told this week, uh, he told a story about a landowner who had planted a vineyard, and then he rented it out to some farmers. And when the time of harvest came, he sent some farmers to gather his portion of the crops. But when the farmers saw the servants, it says they mistreated them and beat them and even killed some of them. 
So he sent some other servants, and the farmers did the same thing. Finally, Jesus said that the landowner decided to send his son. Surely they'll respect my son, he thought. But when the farmers saw the son coming, they gathered together and said, let's kill him, and then the vineyard will be ours. And so they did. And that parable that Jesus told was vividly played out later that week when on Friday, Jesus, God's son, was beaten and killed. But that's not the parable we want to look at today. We want to actually look at the parable Jesus told immediately after telling this story. A parable that points to another time of celebration after the suffering. Uh, we often call this parable uh, the parable of the wedding banquet. It begins in Matthew chapter 22. So hear God's word for today. It says, Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come. But they refused to come. And then he sent some more servants and said, Tell those who have been invited that I've prepared my dinner. My oxen and fattened calf have been butchered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his field, another to his business. The rest seized his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. And the king was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. And then he said to his servants, The wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. Go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. And so the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, both good and bad. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. Friend, he asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? And the man was speechless. And then the king told the attendants, tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. You know, the opening line of this parable points us to an actual reality. You know, the Bible uh, says that there is a coming banquet, and this banquet is not symbolic, it's not mythical language, but an actual feast in which we will sit down at, at an actual table and eat and drink real food. I mean, Jesus spoke about it many times. In Luke chapter 14 or 13, he says, People will come from east and west and north and south and will take their places at the feast in the kingdom of God. In chapter 14, blessed is the man who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. In chapter 22, and I confer on you a kingdom, just as my father conferred one on me so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. Again, Jesus was talking about a real feast. And I can't tell you when in the line of eternal history it will take place, but I am convinced there is coming a day when you and I will join with brothers and sisters throughout the ages, and we will sit at the Lord's table and we shall celebrate. You know, the parable describes it as a great wedding banquet, which incidentally is exactly how the Bible portrays it in the book of Revelation. I mean, hear this scripture from Revelation chapter 19. It says, Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude 
like the roar of rushing waters and like loud peals of thunder shouting hallelujah for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory for the wedding of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of the saints. And then the angel said to me, Write, Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. The parable tells us that all are invited, that the servants went out into the streets and gathered anyone they could find and invited them to come to the banquet. But the parable tells us that not everyone will accept the invitation. Some refused. Some were so busy with their business uh, and their own affairs that they had no time to come and sit at the king's table. All are invited, but only those who have the proper clothing will be seated. I mean, did you hear that in the parable? A, a man came to the, to the banquet, but he wasn't dressed in wedding clothes. And, and since the servants went out and gathered all they could find, the good and bad, it's implied that the proper clothing was made available. In fact, did you hear it in the book of Revelation? When talking about the coming wedding banquet, it says fine linen was given to them to wear. The proper clothing for the banquet is given to us. I think that's what Paul means in, in Galatians chapter 3 when he says, All of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. When we come to Jesus in humility and in surrendering our lives to him, Paul says we are clothed with Christ. That is the only clothing that will be recognized at the banquet. That's what Jesus meant when he said in John 14 that he was going to prepare a place for us, a place for the banquet. But he said, I and the way, and the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Again, all are invited, and I trust that you've taken your invitation, and you've clothed yourself with Christ, and look forward to that banquet. Now, when you think of a wedding banquet, what kind of picture comes to your mind? Is it Dull and boring? You know, weddings are a time of celebration, aren't they? You know, as a pastor, uh, I've been to a lot of wedding receptions. I've been to a lot of wedding banquets. And they are always places of joy and laughter. Because much thought goes into a wedding celebration, doesn't it? I mean, you don't decide earlier that morning what you're going to serve your guests at the wedding. And this was particularly true in, in the Jewish uh, life in Jesus' day. You know, when you had a wedding reception, it was a big deal. You spent a lot of time preparing, and you put out the best that you could afford. In fact, did you hear it in the parable? That the king set out this banquet, and he said that the feast included oxen and fattened cattle. That's plural. Can you imagine what kind of feast that was? I mean, what kind of feast do you think God can afford to set out uh, when the wedding finally comes with the church and Jesus? Now, honestly, we ought not to be surprised uh, when uh, we talk about a God who wants to throw a party to end all parties. In the Old Testament, God is portrayed as a God who loves a good party. In fact, in the Old Testament, he commanded people to party. I mean, here's what he told Moses in Leviticus. 
He said, speak to the Israelites and say to them, these are my appointed feasts the appointed feasts of the Lord, which you are to proclaim as sacred assemblies. Feasts, several times a year. The Feast of Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, the Feast of Trumpets, the Feast of Tabernacles. I mean, what do you think these things were? They were parties, parties with laughter and food and dancing and food and music and food. And did I mention food? I mean, lots of food. In fact, God said, when you go to this party, here are some instructions he gave for it from Deuteronomy chapter 14. He says, use the silver to buy whatever you like, cattle, sheep wine or other fermented drink or anything you wish then you and your household shall eat there in the presence of the lord your god and rejoice it was a party and the israelites would gather together these times during the year and they would celebrate god's goodness with laughter and dancing and feasting you know, God's joy at throwing a party is clearly seen in the life of Jesus. Jesus enjoyed a good party. In fact, his first miracle was at a wedding banquet. And his first miracle was to change water into wine so that the party could continue. And he didn't turn water into cheap wine. I mean, the wedding uh, steward said that this was the best wine of all. Because when God sets the table, he puts out the very best. What a banquet is prepared for us. In fact, it was this attribute of Jesus who enjoyed a good party that led the solemnly pious to accuse him of being a drunk and a glutton. You know, in Luke 7, it, it says the Son of Man came eating and drinking, and you say, here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Well, again, how does one get accused of being a drunkard and a glutton other than going to parties where there's eating and drinking? You know, one doesn't get accused of being a glutton and a drunkard by being somber or, or too pious to laugh. You know, today, we're going to take communion together. And the bread that you will eat is meant to be a foretaste of the party that is to come. I mean, let's go back to that night. It was the Passover. One of the parties, the feast that God had called the Israelites to. As Jesus picked up the bread. He told them, I've eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again. And if you'd been one of the disciples and, and, and you heard him at that point, not eat it again? Jesus, what do you mean not eat it again? This is Passover. It happens every year. What do you mean we're, you're not going to eat it again? And then he picks up the cup. And he says, take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine. And again, I can hear the disciples not drink again? Uh, Jesus, uh, are you going to leave us? Is, is our band of disciples going to be broken up? What do you mean not, not eat and drink again? And had Jesus stopped there, there would be little room for hope. But he ends each of those statements with a five-letter word that brings hope to us today. The word until. Here's the scripture from Luke 22. It says, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. 
For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. And after taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. It's as if Jesus were saying, I know my time on earth is coming to an end. I know that there is a cup of suffering that is being set before me. But that's not where my focus is on this night. I'm looking for a time beyond the suffering. A time of great joy and laughter when we will gather around the table and we will eat and drink again and we will break bread and we will share the cup. We must wait until that day. You know, that's when we take communion. Friends, it's not just looking back to what Jesus did on the cross. It's also looking ahead to the great party that God is planning for us. That's what Paul meant when he said, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So friends, pick up your bread or your cracker, pick up your juice, hold them in your hand. When you look at them, remember this is just a reminder of what is to come. It may not look like much. It doesn't look like that little piece of bread will satisfy. But friends, this bread and this cup remind us that even in the midst of a pandemic, we have reason for hope. Friends, even if we get sick with the coronavirus, we have reason for hope. Even if we or one of our loved ones dies from this virus, we have reason for hope. Even if we lose our job or our income is drastically reduced, we have reason for hope. Even if we look at the future and it seems dark and bleak. Friends, we have reason for hope. For the bread and the cup that you hold in your hand is a taste of the party that is to come. And we only suffer until the party starts. Now, friends, it doesn't mean that we won't suffer or cry in this life. Jesus said that we would have troubles in this life. But our troubles are a little more bearable when we know that there's a party that's coming. The kingdom of heaven is like a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. Now, I want to encourage you now if you would move off of speaker view and go to gallery view, and you'll see uh, several little boxes of your brothers and sisters uh, who are joining us this morning. And I want you to be able to see one another as we take the bread and we take the cup. Friends, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it. So break your bread, even as I break this. And he said, this is my body broken for you. And then he took the cup. And he said that this cup would be a covenant in his blood for the forgiveness of our sins. So will you hold up your cup and your bread 
And will you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we believe that you are present in every place that is hearing my voice now. God, we may be miles apart, but we are together. We are one body. Lord, our bread may not all look alike. Our juice may be different types of juice. But Father, we believe that it represents for us today at Cornerstone Church, the body and blood of Jesus. And so you bless every piece of bread, every cup of juice, in Jesus' name. Amen. So brothers and sisters, take your bread, take your cup, and participate in the Lord's Supper together. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us, friends. I trust this has been a good celebration as we uh, remember again the party that God has planned for us. Friends, uh, I want to remind you that if you see a funny meme this week, particularly one that uh, has an Easter theme, uh, send it to us uh, so that we can laugh together next Sunday as we celebrate Easter. And don't forget to send a, uh, a greeting uh, to your fellow Cornerstone families. Uh, uh, do that by Wednesday so that we can uh, have that ready for next Sunday morning. Friends, may God bless you as we continue to walk together uh, even through these trying times. Amen.